Welcome to this video. Thank you, JT, very much for your question, for your request about how I care for my trichopelia. <clears throat> I bought this orchid as Trichopelia Fire Venus. I'm going to put a disclaimer out there that Trichopelia Fire Venus is probably a made up name because the seller at the time had some super exotic, fantastical names that made absolutely no sense at all and cannot be found on the interwebs. The next disclaimer is that when I featured this orchid the first time in a video saying Trichopelia everything I do not know, I was also given a heads up that this is possibly not a Trichopelia and it could be a Bulbophyllum. JT, your question was, how do I take care of my Trichopelia? And that is exactly what I'm going to talk about today, even though there's not much to see. There's plenty to talk about because regardless if this orchid is mislabeled or not, I am treating her as trichopelia and my care is as follows. The biggest challenge I had to overcome with this orchid that I mentioned back in that video was that my new growths had to stop rotting because she wants to grow, she's growing well, but the new growths are very fleshy and delicate that my misting the surface layer of my leca to keep that damp and avoid any roots from desiccating, I needed to stop the rot. Seeing as my setup is leca and self-watering and I have a dry top layer and the roots of a trichopelia are fine, like a fine oncidium root structure, they can desiccate very, very quickly and they need it to get into the media quickly. If you can grow Trichopelia mounted, that is even better because you've got complete and total control of getting that root system nice and wet. In my climate, I cannot grow a Trichopelia mounted. So that was my biggest challenge. And what I did was I continued with the setup of Leca and self-watering because that works well for Oncidium types as well. But I added a top layer of Akadama to even further increase the humidity around the leca so that that wouldn't dry out so fast and the new roots would find their way into the pot without desiccating and my misting has completely stopped because the akadama is so wicking and water retentive i do not even have to mist the surface of this orchid everything is happening via the reservoir and the microfiber within the pot that is the biggest biggest plus in the past 12 months that I have seen on the progress of this orchid and she's completely rooted in. You see lava rocks on the surface of my media, they were only there to support the structures of the orchid when I put her back into the setup because she was pretty loose and as you can see her leaves are hanging over the top shape and they are quite heavy considering the small pseudobulbs that this orchid grows and I didn't want the orchid lifting herself out of the pot. Lava Rock is not there as part of the setup. It was mainly there as support. And theoretically, I could remove the Lava Rock now because the orchid is perfectly rooted in. Given the fact that I'm treating this orchid like a Trichopelia that I bought, it is a hot to warm grower and it is found in damp tropical forests up to 1,500 meters, which gives me a temperature range of 14 degrees Celsius all the way up to 40 plus degrees Celsius. Now, based on the fact that this orchid has been treated as a recovery orchid in the past month since that video aired, I have been keeping her extremely protected from any harsh elements as best as I possibly could so that she could recover. And she has been living indoors in my grow space in shade. I'm not even saying bright shade. My blooming alley, I consider bright shade. Indoors is shady. And then when the sun starts to drop down in the sky, bit by bit, the sun will creep in and provide some more direct light. But I never ever have her exposed to the harsh light or the bright shade as per the outdoors, including the dry wind that I have a lot of and could stress this orchid out even further. Theoretically, I could now put her into my blooming alley because of the bright shade and she could tolerate that perfectly dappled sun as long as it's not during the hot time of day. But as she is in recovery, I am working towards strength in this orchid as opposed to blooms. And as a trichopelia, if she were to be strong enough at this point in time, blooming alley is fine, bright shade, 
plenty of airflow if the humidity is very, very high. Seeing as my setup is providing quite a high level of humidity around the base of the orchid, the airflow is paramount still so that the new growth won't rot out. So pretty much Trichopelio can be grown in Oncidium kind of light. Same mannerisms for watering. When we look at Oncidiums with a fine root system, we have Oncidiums with very chunky roots. That's a different story altogether. But Oncidium care is perfect for this one because of the fine root system. When it comes to my fertilizing, what I do with this one is when it's not an active growth, I don't give it any fertilizer. When it is an active growth as it is now, I'm putting in 160 parts per million. I do not want to burn the fine roots. Again, I'm building this orchid towards strength as opposed to towards blooming. Once she has the strength that I am happy with, then we can focus on blooming. So 160 parts per million is to respect the size of the roots and make sure that the orchid gets enough nutrients to do what it has to do. I also supplement with calcium and magnesium and seaweed ever so often while in active growth. And by that, I mean once a month at a total strength of 100 parts per million of which 60 parts per million is CalMag and 40 is seaweed. I do not do any soaking on this orchid again, because of the tender structures of the growth as they grow out. And I've noticed that they would rot very quickly. So that goes into the reservoir after a flush through before filling the reservoir with either the fertilizer or the supplement. You can see that I have some brown spotting on my leaves and that I conclude is due to cold damage. Cold and wet, both in combination. Not enough airflow, not enough light. So my winter spring was very harsh and prolonged during the season of 21 and 22 and I had extremely high humidity which this orchid absolutely loves but I had cold airflow and on top of that I didn't have light. So these three factors I believe are what caused the black spotting and mainly on the older structures so I'm okay with that. It's not like the newer structures were affected because they only started once the temperatures and the light levels were matching, temperatures going up and light levels increasing. So keeping this orchid too cold, too dark, with high humidity, and there is no airflow that will dry either of it out, even the airflow is cold, is probably not a good idea, as you can see by mine. Thankfully, this orchid has not attracted any form of pests. Again, the new growths being so tender, they would be a pest magnet in my opinion. But I am so glad to be able to say none of that has ever occurred in my growth space, even if a neighboring orchid was an invitation for some mealybugs. This one never ever, thankfully, because the last thing I want is new growths to rot out as I'm trying to build strength towards this orchid. And once again, if this is a trichopelia, then we are good to go. And if it is not a trichopelia, then we will find out in due time. But when it comes to information on the internet about trichopelia care, this is how I care for my trichopelia. And I say that in inverted commas because who knows with this seller whether I do have one or not. But regardless of that, if you are going to get a trichopelia, you're growing one, you're confused by it, that is the care that I'm giving this orchid right now. I'm targeting my care towards trichopelia and I really hope that this video was helpful. If I were to put an Oncidium in its place and say treat it the way you would treat it this Oncidium, it would be exactly the same care as if I were to put a cattleya in the place of this orchid right now, which I'm assuming is trichopelia. I could put a cattleya there and talk to you about trichopelia care. So please don't be confused or put off by the fact, well, uh, this doesn't look like a trichopelia. The care is what I've just mentioned to you, and I hope that helps. And for update purposes, the Akadama has worked a treat. Very, very happy to be able to say that I have no more rot issues and this orchid is going from strength to strength. Unfortunately, of course, we have growths right up against the pot, which is gonna be awkward at some point in time. This is not the time, this is not the season where I'm going to intervene. I'm gonna leave her another year before I expose her to higher levels of light and then we will see what happens in 2023. Let me know if this was helpful, JT. And if anybody else has any questions with regards to my orchid and the visual didn't overlap with the information I was providing, 
please bring that to my attention in the comments and we can take it from there and I can be more specific. Again, if I were to put a cattleya there, I would talk to you about trichopelia care. You would see probably a lot more because I have cattleyas in bloom as opposed to this one, which is just green vegetation at the moment. Be aware that the trichopelias will also produce their flower spikes from the base of a pseudobulb and don't anticipate or expect anything to come out of the apex of the leaves. That just on a side note. Thank you very much for spending time with me looking at some foliage and listening to me talk about trichopelia care and in your mind's eye you're probably thinking that's not trichopelia. Discard your mind's eye, the information is valid. <laughs> Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though that you please stay safe and take care. Bye!